Good morning, everybody. I hope you all had a great weekend and enjoyed the beautiful blue sky on Saturday. Um, I hope you managed to get some sleep last night because there was thunder and lightning. Those of you who are in Bournemouth, I know it was rumbling around. The storm was rumbling around all night. Um, but fortunately, I think the clouds have parted a little bit this morning. Now, Friday was a very special day for our upper fives. It was their final school day before their GCSE exams start today. And those of you who drive into school or are driven into school might have spotted some interesting new Torbertith pupils standing alongside Mr. Craddock and Mrs. Stone. Let's have a watch. <laughs> Indeed, there were two enormous inflatable uh, dinosaurs seen around the site, uh, even spotted running in front of the hub at one point. So um, we've, we've registered them now and they'll be joining Upper Four. We also have some photographs from the day. Let's have a look. The Upper Fives, their dance routine. They did a great routine. They had a super day, uh, really enjoyed it. And we had another mystery guest. Did you spot? this little chap. So I think he's still there um, and we need to get him a fishing rod. So have a, have a look next time you're heading past the Lily Pond Quad, just to see if our new, new member of the community is there. Now, I had a lovely email came in um, from Cat Peacock in boarding. She said the boarders had a great weekend. They were relaxing. They did some cooking, had some food outside, played some games. They had a lovely time in the sun, including, there they are, Teddy and Bertie. They also had a super weekend. So thank you, uh, Miss Peacock, for sending those in. But someone who didn't have quite such a fun weekend, and she's a good sport for letting me show this. Honestly, Mr. Thomas tackled Miss Elford at the star football training session on Friday and left her with those injuries. Mr. Thomas, I never knew you were such a vicious tackler, honestly. Apparently it was a 50-50 tackle, but even so. So thank you, Miss Alford, for, for allowing us to show that. Mr. Thomas, I think you need to wear some sort of softer trainers now. Mrs. O'Shea sent me some photographs of birds. Now, have a look. Can you see all the ducklings? Look in between the leaves. There are lots of baby ducklings there. But the next photo worried me slightly because I don't think that swan should be that close to Mrs. O'Shea. Uh, they can break your arm, Mrs. O'Shea, you know that. So thank you for sending those in. Um, I always like some nature photographs. Now I want to congratulate someone. So let's have a look. Um, I want to congratulate Emily Sherwin. Emily is in Upper Six, and she took part in the Dart 18 Southwest Sailing Championships, and she came eighth in the Southwest. So can we give Emily a round of applause? Well done, well done. Right, now, our assembly theme this week is cultural diversity. Let's have a look. We should have a slide. There it is, cultural diversity. So that was the theme that Mr. Jewell set me to talk about today. And what does it actually mean? So um, if you have a culturally diverse community, you have a community where you have many sectors. So in terms of culture, disability, sexual orientation, religion, socioeconomic status, gender, age, race, and ethnicity, you've got a real blend there across and it is diverse, which makes your culture and your community diverse. Um, and I've picked out some photographs that I thought summed that up. That's a nice one that I spotted that had been made, um, sort of a, a, an art installation there, but showing you the cultural diversity. And I like this one as well, because I thought there you've got um, age, race, religion, um, all sorts of different people in your community there. And that's a good representation of cultural diversity. So, how is it evident in our society? Well, cultural diversity, it enriches communities, having different faiths, different languages, cultures, different ethnic backgrounds, ages, abilities, sexual orientations. These differences make our communities vibrant and dynamic 
and multifaceted. Now, diversity is the opposite of homogeneity. So you can see here, if something is very homogenous, it's the same. Homogeneity is the quality or state of being all the same or all of the same kind. And if you have a society which is very um, culturally homogenous, it's very similar. You don't get this diversity, differences, differences of background, approach, perspective. And I think that lessens then um, our society if it's very homogenous. Now you will see this quote, um, Miss Elford, when you walk into the hub, you'll see the quote on the wall by Walter Lippmann says, when all think alike, then no one is thinking. And I think it's very important that actually we have diversity of thought, diversity of approach, um, diversity in our communities, because if everyone is just going in the one same way, they're blinkered, they're really narrow minded, it is not a good thing. I'm going to quote uh, some of those examples from Animal Farm. I know many of you are studying Animal Farm and you will know from your lessons about those attempts to impose just one way of thinking and one way of behaving on the community and what happens to those who are considered either to be different or other and they become uh, second class or third class citizens. They are persecuted and a very homogenous culture to my mind, it lacks dynamism, it lacks innovation, it lacks richness. Um, it's really not fruitful and pro productive. It can become a bit of a desert, a bit of a wasteland in terms of thoughts, ideas, uh, culture. And where does our cultural diversity come from? Well, it is due to the fact that we are global citizens. We travel the world, we live and settle in other places. We have partners and children who speak more than one language, or are of different faiths. We are able to experience food, music, literature, dance, customs from all over the world now, both in person because we have the opportunity to travel and also uh, on Love. Virtually, you can suddenly find yourself at a Spanish festival or uh, at a, a Chinese um, New Year's ceremony. These things, you can be transported um, literally and virtually to, to share in that diversity. Now, Saturday presented a perfect example of cultural diversity in the form of the Eurovision Song Contest. And the UK, well, Sam Ryder, he did a fantastic effort there from Sam Ryder, the best position for the UK uh, in, I think, over 20 years. So I thought I'd show a short clip of Sam finishing off. Well, I have to say, in terms of live performance, he absolutely nailed it. Really good. Those of you who love your music and singing and performing, on that massive stage in front of millions of people globally, he absolutely smashed it. But the overall winners were Ukraine and their song embodied the cultural diversity of their nation. You had the traditional customs, the traditional instruments and costume, costumes to really modern influences, um, showing just how diverse the culture of Ukraine is. I just felt we had to watch it this morning. So absolutely the embodiment of cultural diversity, that winning song there. But I have to say, uh, not everyone in Norway uh, wears yellow bodysuits and wears wolf masks all the time. So take that with a pinch of salt, some of that diversity being shown. But this morning, I'm delighted to welcome three new pupils to Talbot Heath who are from Ukraine and who are staying with uh, Talbot pupils, their families, whilst their country is in the grips of war. And we extend a very warm welcome this morning to Marsha and Anastasia, who have joined Lower Five today, and to Margot in Year Six. And they bring with them their language, their culture, their customs, their experiences, all of which will enrich our school community and increase its cultural diversity. And I know they will be very warmly welcomed, so I hope you have a super first day with us. 
And I'm proud of the fact that so many of our pupils across the school have diverse backgrounds. So they speak a range of languages, uh, they have experiences of different countries, they are of many different faiths and many different ethnic backgrounds. It widens our horizons, it broadens our perspectives, and it stops us becoming part of a real Bournemouth bubble where we only view our world being within sort of five miles of where we live. So take note of that and celebrate our diversity and cultural diversity as a school. So I have noticed this this morning um, and I'm wondering whether or not I can pull up the tennis team. So let's have a look. This is our Aberdeer Cup B team, and they really battled hard to win their semi-final of the Area Cup against BSG. It was a fantastic display of tennis, really high standard, and Talbot Heath won eight to four. They have now reached the Area Final, and they may have to face the Talbot Heath A team if they win their semi-final, but we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. So well done. Can we give them a round of applause? Congratulations. Excellent work. Right. Now the next notice is really important and you have got to take this to heart and pay attention. Today the public exams start. These are our first public exams live for three years. Um, GCSEs will be taking place in the hall every day for five weeks. A-levels will start next week for four weeks and they're going to be in the exams room, which is upstairs by Reprographics, where the lift is and the staircase goes up. That is where the exams room is. It is essential that our candidates have the best possible chance to do as well as they can. And any disturbance can really affect their concentration and how they perform in their exams. Therefore, it is vital, this is not optional, it's absolutely essential that all of you help them by respecting the silence and the no entry signs. When internal doors are shut, you should assume that silence is necessary. Normally we keep doors open uh, and they're, they're hooked back, but when they are shut and you see a silence notice on them, it means that that exam is live in progress. When the exam is finished, those doors will be opened and those doors held back, but if they're shut, if you're going through them, and I would advise you do not, it's no entry in front of that hall from locker area to locker area, you go round and avoid those cloisters as well, because that is the main exam part for GCSEs. But if you're going through a door that's shut with a silence notice on it, can you not let it swing behind you? Can you just let it close gently behind you? Um, so we will make every effort to open those doors once those exams are not taking place. Um, but if they're shut, you absolutely have to be silent. And if you see A boards on the playground saying silence exams, stay away from that area by entrance one. If you're moving any emergency phone calls um, over to entrance two, we don't want anybody playing. We've moved the netball posts, nothing please below that window and entrance one from next week. So when we finish this assembly, it's essential that you leave your tutor rooms and go out in silence and go down the staircases and to your lessons in silence, please. And that if you're going into the locker area, you're very, very quiet. We want to give those exam candidates the best possible chance of doing well. Right, Reverend Burke, are you there for our prayer? Yes, indeed. And we obviously wish our exam candidates well. And so we pray as we celebrate our differences, we thank you, O oh God, for the rich cultural diversity that we enjoy. As we welcome Anastasia, Margot and Marsha into this community, we remember with sadness places in our world where a culture is threatened. May we all work for a world where diversity is valued and true peace becomes a reality. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So have a very good day, everybody. Head out quietly to lesson one. Thank you. Bye.